Man, enjoy your time here on this big, beautiful boat. It's gorgeous and it's all for you. It's wonderful, man. Yeah. You can't call it a boat, it's a ship. Okay. It's a boat. I like when the captain comes to the show. I like that. A lot of the times they don't bother themselves with that. <laughs> You're not the first person to try to get me to call it a ship, so I hate to disappoint you. And I'm still going strong with boat. You will not wrestle that away from me. They already tried to trick me when I got on here and tried to fool me, trying to make me use their words, telling me there was a Starbucks side and a pork side or whatever. I, don't I ain't calling it that. You can't make me use your words. I don't, and these people are the same way. When we were walking up to this thing, didn't you look at it and go, look at that boat, right? It just feels good to see. Look at that thing, look at that boat. I like big boats and I cannot lie. <laughs> see, we like boats. The nerve. It's just a better word. It's a better word for what it is. It, frankly, boat, boat, float. <laughs> Thank you. See, it just makes sense. Ship. <laughs> no good ever came out of ship. Boat float, ship sink. <laughs> right? Whenever you hear ship, it's got something going wrong with shipwreck. <laughs> Lifeboat. <laughs> Thank you. I think I've made my point abundantly clear. They can't make me use those words, man. right? We used to watch the love boat. <laughs> Nobody would have watched the relationship. <laughs> huh? Who wants that? <laughs> Honey, we have to talk. Just uh, <laughs> show off my TV. I just want the love boat back. <laughs> love boat. See, by the way, did the love boat ruin this for you a little bit? Because it did for me, because I watched the love boat and thought this would be exactly that. Remember you watched the love boat and it wasn't the eight people who worked on the whole boat, first of all. And you got to meet all of them. Remember the captain would be out there shaking hands. He shook every person's hand who got on that boat. Captain Stooby was out there wearing his dress white with the little things on his shoulder, right? And so I thought, hey, when I get on, that's who I'm looking for. I'm looking for the captain. And I got on. Turns out the people who are wearing all white with the little things, that's the food service people. <laughs> you know, I was sitting up there in the evening and I was like, oh, there's the captain. <laughs> When I see another dude, I'm like, oh, wait, there's the black dude, Captain. <laughs> wait a minute, there's the Filipino lady, Captain. <laughs> and she's drunk. <laughs> How many captains y'all need on this boat? <laughs> Two drunk ones and one sober. <laughs> That's it. I'm going to go ahead and punch you out right now. Thank you. Thank you, though, honey. Appreciate it. Anyway, all these wonderful things that go on on this boat, man. It tripped me out, though. I'm glad I wasn't the only one who was kind of thinking that the love boat would be exactly like. <laughs> By the way, speaking of our lifeboats. Did you see our lifeboats hanging off the side of our big boat? Uh, you saw them hanging out there, right? And did you do what I did, a little visual math, and go, that is not enough lifeboats. There's 6,000 people upon the big boat. Right? You too, you looked at that and you did that little counting and you were like, there's no, I'm, I'm sorry. They have made up their mind there's an acceptable amount of loss that will occur. <laughs> if, God forbid, something goes wrong. I'm telling you, I'm here to tell you folks, everybody does not have a place in a lifeboat. That is just the way this thing is laid out. I'm sorry, if you are in a room and you can touch all four walls at once, you don't have a place in a lifeboat. 
the way life works. <laughs> it works. And trust me, they will be checking room keys when people are running into them white boats. It's gonna be a dude, a big black dude, like outside of a club, just stopping people. Hold on. <laughs> Let me see your room key. You better produce that room key. You're gonna look at it and go, no, nah, not with that key. You don't have a place in this boat. I'm sorry, man. You bought that ticket with a coupon and we all know it, right? <laughs> so you just need to step back. Now, I saw some plastic bags around the corner. You can probably find them, tie them up, blow them up, and maybe you can float somewhere. But you don't have a place in this boat. I'm sorry, man. No, you should have read the back of your little coupon ticket that said no lifeboat privileges. It was right there. <laughs> It is a privilege, not a right. So get on, move, 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 because that guy behind you is from the Haven. Get up here. Get up here, sir. Get on up here. Get up here, sir. No, that is your boat. That's you right there for you by yourself. I got a fondue pot going. Right nice warm bread, and this, this is for you, and a complimentary peacock. <laughs> The <laughs> Haven guy and his boat just feet up on an empty chair. <laughs> go closer. I want to look at their faces as they tread water. Look at them go. Look at them go. <laughs> uh, uh, careful, I have a martini. <laughs> Eventually his boat just becomes a plane and it flies him back to his lavish life. <laughs> Are there any Havenites with us? <laughs> oh, they don't want to say now. <laughs> they don't think of it. There he is, get him! <laughs> Stone him! <laughs> They're here, though. They are here. Just look around. You can figure it out. Just see who's covering up their watch right now. <laughs> Come on. Down here with the unwashed masses. <laughs> For real, though. Any having nights? Okay, don't be sad. It's fine. You earned it. All right. Okay. Don't worry. <laughs> They're here, trust me. It's, it's a big night out for them, you know what I mean? To come down here to the single digit floor. <laughs> <laughs> Should we? You see what goes on down there. I'm so curious. <laughs> I hear they eat from a common area. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> Their little hands just reaching in there. Are you silver? Where do they have that? <laughs> That's how they keep their kids behaving up there. You know what I mean? They tell them, look, young man, you better straighten up. You better straighten up, I'll send you right down there with those single digit people. <laughs> now, when this is over, do you want to leave this boat the way you came on a helicopter? <laughs> or do you want to be dragging your own suitcase through that atrium like an animal? Like an animal. Alright, then you straighten up. Fly right. It's nice up there. The bees. We're down here doing this. They got the original Broadway cast of Hamilton up there right now. <laughs> I was talking to a lady uh, earlier. We were talking about the Haven. You know, we're quiet all. She goes, do you know, do you know they have butlers up there in that table? <laughs> I'm like, girl, what do you think I do when I ain't at that stupid show? <laughs> I'm up there buggling. <laughs> <laughs> Sir, I'm here with your panda sticks. <laughs> <laughs> this 
thought I took that a little too hard. Did you, did you, did you, the collective recoil. Like, oh, wait a minute. Okay. That, <laughs> hey, that is a majestic and endangered animal. <laughs> they're not, they're not doing, I don't think they're doing that. For all I know, they could be. <laughs> Must <laughs> be nice. The whole dang thing is nice, man. This whole boat is nice. I want to see all of it, man. The captain's here. Maybe I can get a little personal tour. <laughs> that that do they do that? I wonder. Like, can you go up there and see it? Because I was a kid. I remember you're on a plane. They took you up to the front of the plane where the Captain of the plane, whatever you call it, guy. pilot, when the pilot is, where the pilot is, you know, they would take you up there, I don't know if you can go up there now, but I would like to go to the captain, see him, talk to him, I got ideas about how to make this better. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm, a, I, I'm fascinated by this whole thing, it's a beautiful thing, it's a billion dollar enterprise that we're upon here, you know, with the, everything, this is wonderful, the getaway. I've been on two boats, the Getaway, the other one, the uh, Escape, and they got the Breakaway. Who's naming these boats? A guy in prison? <laughs> <laughs> I shouldn't make fun of them, though, because I don't want them to not have me back. <laughs> I know, and I'm already booked on the new boat. <laughs> Shanked in the shower. I don't know if you're going to That that one's gonna be nice. <laughs> <laughs> Biscuits for cigarettes too. That one's coming out in 2019. Swapping your biscuit. Not <laughs> 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 uh, what I know about prison. I actually got offered to do a show in the prison, which I know. I, I was biggest regret in my life is that I didn't do it. I should have done it for the experience, but in the moment when somebody asks you something like that, you think, I don't want to talk to them people. <laughs> they in prison. You supposed to go in there and do comedy for prisoners? <laughs> well, you just go in there, hey! <laughs> <laughs> Don't you hate when you get a new cell mate? <laughs> and he want to be the man too? <laughs> anyway, now I'm here on the boat. Mm, the assistant captain. I wonder if that position is taken. You know what I mean? I wonder if there must be some way I can assist. You know how like when you see a fire truck go by and then that dude is sitting in the back with that little wheel up there? <laughs> Do we have that? So I'm connected to nothing, I can drive the back of the boat. <laughs> when we park, you know. <clears throat> back in it in. I'm gonna go see the captain. I'm sure he doesn't want to see me. Force my way in. Go up there and kick the door open. Look at me! I am the captain now! <laughs> that is my Somali pirate, and you're welcome. That is dead on. If you don't know what I'm talking about, Google it. You'll find it. Oh, that's right. You don't have the internet. Forget that idea. Let's start dang right out in front of you. That's awful. Man. Uh, how bad are you jonesing for your internet right now? Just hating it. Isn't it horrible to be without your phone right now? You don't know how bad it is where you're standing there in the shower just holding a bar of soap like... <laughs> Trying to get somewhere. Mm. The captain's got the internet. <laughs> That's good too. <laughs> oh man. 
<laughs> By the way, these here, man, who's driving a boat right now? <laughs> I say, that's how stupid I am. I say, driving a boat. <laughs> Mike has a big wooden wheel up there. <laughs> <laughs> Can you take people to cause a liar? <laughs> I don't think that's how it works. I mean, let's be honest. It's a boat. Like I said, it's a million, billion dollar enterprise, right? It costs nearly a billion dollars. To technology, it's a good thing we have a captain. We need him to oversee him, his expertise. But it's not essential for the boat to move. You know what I mean? They got autopilot. It's cool. In fact, they could drive this boat by remote control from Miami. You know that? <laughs> For all we know right now, the captain's behind the boat water skin. <laughs> we were so done with you before. We're really, really done. Mm, we got it, honey. I promise. If I get stuck, I'll come to you. <laughs> I will, dear. Thank you. I will. I've been doing this a long time. Is it, what do you think? I was just hanging out on deck and, hey, you want to headline you the show? Know. Yeah. No, we know. <laughs> we never know, and you never shut up, so we're even. <laughs> It's done. There you go. All right. Yeah. There you go. Anybody else want to be a hero? <laughs> <laughs> right, Let me tell you one last little thing about the. Uh, uh, they had this on the other boat. The uh, captain's Q and A, which I thought was fascinating. If they have that here, I don't know. Check the schedule order. If they have it, see it. All right. It's fascinating. All of this stuff is fascinating. You, by the way, you know when they, they did your boat drill. You know, when you first got on, they did that. And they, to make sure you know what to do in case of an emergency, right? And you're all informed, right? We do that too for the crew. But ours is on Wednesday. <laughs> <laughs> How important could it be if it's Wednesday? You know what I mean? So, oh, so we're certain nothing's going to happen between now and then. There's a free for all. If anything were to happen now, oh, you go out there light bulb, you're gonna just see me out there with a golf club just swinging it. Ah, this is mine. Not Wednesday yet. I don't know what to do. I'll bring that up at the Q and A. So they had the Q and A, and the lady stood up because the guys just sitting there in the atrium in a chair, a regular chair, not a captain's chair. People can ask him whatever they want. It seems so, so vulnerable sitting there. Right. Lady stands up. Captain, hi. Hello. <laughs> Question. <laughs> Does the crew live on the ship? <laughs> <laughs> Honest and true, I kid you not. He's a perfect gentleman. He just answered the question. But I wish he would have said, ah, oh, no, they commute. <laughs> if you go out on deck in the morning, you'll see him coming to work. <laughs> Punch me in, I'm late. <laughs> <laughs> You're in the restaurant, you look out the window, see that guy just dangling there? <laughs> Hello! Can I get you something? <laughs> oh, very nice. Mm -hmm. I need a coffee. I was tired. Mmm, but I'm good, man. I uh, I saw something I thought was kind of interesting. I saw a lady with a tattoo on her foot, and it said, "There's always hope." <laughs> I know she thought she was doing the Lord's work when she got that tattoo. I'm so glad <laughs> she's really gonna get that call. No. Kelly, Amber's having a real hard time. We got to get over there. Where are your flip flops? <laughs> <laughs> Here we 
baby girl. And it was kind of sweet. Kind of sweet. I just imagine her sitting at a funeral behind a sobbing widow and that foot comes sailing over her shoulder. <laughs> Honey, read my foot. <laughs> I saw this guy had a tattoo on his face. It said, Diana is beautiful. So essentially, what he's doing is saying, hey, while we both know you're not going to hire me for this job that I'm in the room for, at least you can be thinking good thoughts about Diana. <laughs> Foxy, man, if she wasn't, this wouldn't be on my face and curse it. Look at it. I like to think Diana didn't leave him hanging though. I hope she got a tattoo as well. But maybe more sensible, a little bit more discreet, less business. <laughs> maybe one of them red cages right here. It says Jeff means well. <laughs> But he gets carried away. <laughs> Jeff just trying to be romantic. I saw something very romantic on Valentine's Day. Right, I was in LA, I was at home. And somebody went old school and had a plane right up in the sky. On a Skyrider plane, you know what I'm talking about? They used to do that all the time. It said, I love you, pumpkin. I was like, wow, look at that. That is extremely romantic. That is beautiful. That is a lucky lady. Then I thought, you know who's even more lucky than her? Any guy in that area who also calls his wife Pumpkin. <laughs> <laughs> right? He could have completely forgotten about Valentine's Day and just been outside like, ah, hey Pumpkin, come here. <laughs> Come on out here, girl. Come on now. <laughs> right? Look at that. See, now you see why I didn't get you a card? Because <laughs> I had some better plan, that's why. Look at that. No, I don't care how much it costs. You worth it. <laughs> yeah. Huh? Oh, no, I just told you we was going to Olive Garden to get you out the house. That's the present right there. <laughs> Now let's go on in here and eat them leftovers. <laughs> I was in LA and I was going into the mall and I saw a sign on top of a van. It said, stress relieving massage. You know what causes me a lot of stress? People trying to lure me into a van. <laughs> I can tell you how that massage is going to go 10 seconds into it, you pop up. Are we moving? <laughs> Next thing you know, you're on the news. <laughs> Not in a good way. <laughs> you know what I realized? Anytime a guy goes missing, how we feel about it really depends on the picture of the guy that they show us after that. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like when they put that picture up there, sometimes it ain't the best picture. It make you really get drawn in. It's like a picture where other people were in it, but they're cut out, and the guy looks a little too festive, and he's like wearing Mardi Gras beads, and he's like... <laughs> <laughs> you see that picture, and you think, man, I ain't looking for that dude. <laughs> looks like he just wandered off. <laughs> Man, that's what my wife already know. If I come up missing, she know the picture of me that she gonna use on the news is like <laughs> <laughs> People will see that and be like, oh no, we got to find Clinton Jackson. <laughs> you can't even see those eyes. <laughs> Maybe I'll just do one where I'm just like holding a puppy. <laughs> Because <laughs> people would see that and be like, is that puppy with them? <laughs> Get my flashlight, I'm throwing out. <laughs> right. Yeah, it's true. Mm. Somebody put up flyers in my neighborhood and said, lost dog. There was no picture. <laughs> Than just an email address. <laughs> you cannot let the person who liked the dog the least be in charge of finding the dog. 
That's clearly what that was. Why even put up several flyers? Why not just one flyer just directly to the dog? <laughs> hey, dog, come home. We're sorry. Just as effective. Somebody put one, said, lost cat. He's black and has white on his chest and his tail. And he's kind of fat. <laughs> I'm like, dang, I hope the cat don't see that. <laughs> this cat's just gonna be like, see, that's why I left. <laughs> they wanna know why I haven't purred in six months? That's why! <laughs> jacked up, man. I love your pets. I love mine. I got fish. I keep fishing at home. One of them was sick when I left, which was weird. Because I hate that, because I had to go out on the road, you know, come out here. And I told my wife, look, when the fish is sick, you got to put this medicine in there. Now I'm the little fish. I got these big, brightly colored fish. They're called discus. They're freshwater. They're from South America. But I got a, a yellow pair. They're gorgeous, right? And when it was sick, I said, all right, so you put the medicine in there. She's doing that now. Like, the funny thing about them, when they get sick, they turn black. I know. Can you imagine if that happened to you? <laughs> you can sniff them, start walking all tools. <laughs> when this sneeze and you blow out a giant afro. <laughs> Every time you wipe your nose with a Kleenex or a no look three pointer from <laughs> I can't miss! I can't miss! <laughs> Somebody asked me an interesting question. They said, Clinton Jackson, why is it that black guys who don't know each other always say hello to each other? And I said, well, first of all, why do you care? <laughs> do you think we're plotting something? <laughs> hey, man, what's up? It's still on? Cool. <laughs> <laughs> Second of all, I'm the wrong person to ask, frankly, because I say hello to everybody. I like it. It makes me feel good. I like to think it makes other people feel good. Again, the milk of human kindness. It's a nice connection, right? I like it. I always do it. I thought, thank you, sweetheart. I appreciate that. Yeah, there you go. Touchdown. See? She knows what I'm saying. I saw my mama do it her whole life, and I always liked that about how my mama made people's day by saying hello. So I think you can, right? Here's something that I've noticed. You know, you, you know who my favorite person to say hello to randomly is? The Filipinos! And, <laughs> and, no, I do enjoy the Filipinos, don't get me wrong. I do, I do, I do. I'm going to tell you a little quick story just because you're so enthusiastic about it. <laughs> I had a friend of mine, right, and we were going to the movies one day, and we were, she said, oh, i got to stop by my mom's house, right, and they were Filipino, okay. I mean, they probably still are, I just... <laughs> I haven't seen them in a while. Yeah, they're very, they're very nice and they're very polite in public as well. Um, <laughs> they are. They are. are there exceptions? Yes, like with anything else. So we stopped by her mom's house. She's like, I just got to stop at my mom's house real quick. Right? So we go to her, her mom's house. And her mom's from the Philippines, lovely lady, right? And, and the beautiful accent, you love it, you know what I mean? So she goes in there, and her mom was sitting in the living room, crying, right? Just connected to nothing. And she was like, Mom, why are you crying? She goes over to Mom, why are you crying? And again, uh, accent, but very eloquent English. Like a lot of Filipino people do speak great. They have great, you know, they use the right word. And I love it. And uh, her mom said the word that she chose to express how she was feeling and why she was crying, she said she was vulnerable. Right? She goes, oh, Justin, I am vulnerable. And my friend looked at her mom and in all sincerity said, you're Barney Rubble? <laughs> <laughs> okay, I didn't know what she 
she said at first either, but I knew it wasn't that. <laughs> anyway, we're going to get out of here. I'm going to finish my thought. I'm going to tell you this last thought. I'll tell you this last thought, and then we're going to get out of here. And I would dismount, and then and you can have our conversation. <laughs> No, I just mean that whatever, I'll listen to whatever she has to say, but I just want to allow this to, just this last thing right here with everybody. You know, no, thank you. Appreciate it. I appreciate it. Now, anyway, so I told you, I like to say hello to people, right? And I, I, I'm nothing if not uh, observant. That's all I got is my powers of observation. I notice things, okay? Again, my favorite person to say hello to, the white guy who loves black people. But he ain't got no black friends. <laughs> and you say, well, Clinton Jackson, how could you know that? Oh, I know. <laughs> I can tell when I say hello to him. And I'll watch him light up like a Christmas tree. <laughs> That's beautiful. And I go, hey, man, how you doing? And he's like... <laughs> that is my brother. You know what I mean? Like, right now, you know what I mean? I see that it means something to him that we had that little moment. I feel like he goes home and tells his family over dinner. They just sitting there and he's like just busting. Just, Did anything good happen to anybody today? <laughs> You guys go first because mine is really good. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. You know, and then I hope to someday sit down with his family and be his brother right next to him, right? So here's the other thing that I've noticed. And I noticed it a lot even on this very boat. Hey, scooch in. Listen. Sometimes I'll say hello. This is my other favorite guy. Sometimes I'll say hello to an Indian guy. <laughs> And if he's dark skinned, there's a weird look that'll come across his face. I think he thinks I think he's black. <laughs> I've seen that look too many times not to report it to you now. You know, because I'm telling you, I've seen that look when I go, hey man, how you doing? <laughs> <laughs> Don't go dragging me into it. <laughs> I have no knowledge of your plan. <laughs> All right, you guys, we got to get out of here. Our time's done.